It sounds like thunder, you gotta hit for the high grounds. Walk, water come in, no fooling around. A pee man in the sun, a pee man grab your bags and run. A pee man another swell, stem your day. Breakfast with Bob, oh. Pacho Man! Love that! Hey everybody, Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by EAS, Myoplex, Hoka, One One, Polar, Velofix, Norma Tech, Four Seasons, Walleye, Amio, Power Breather. Our next guest, the lovely Alicia Kay. How are you? I'm doing great, Bob. How are you doing? Always a pleasure. So last year, I th- you're right, we were talking Tiny House. Yes. <laughs> and so we were, because, uh, Katie and Tommy Safaris. Yes, our very good friends. They yeah. ended up doing that with my, my buddy, John Weisbarth, hosts that show. They yes. ended up getting, they got a house. Did you get a house? Yeah, we ended up going uh, and getting a tidy house as well. And um, it is awesome. And it's a totally different lifestyle from when we're in Florida at our... 1500 square foot house feels like a mansion to us now. <laughs> so where is that at? Where is your... Uh, we're in Boulder, yeah, yeah. And you have a tiny house in Boulder? Yes. How yes. big? It is 300 square feet, including the lofts. <laughs> Very spacious. So where do you where do you keep the bikes and all that stuff? Um, as Katie and Tommy say, tiny house, big shed. <laughs> tiny house, big shed. I yeah. Like that. Last year's your first experience here. Correct. At 23rd. Yeah, 23rd place. Yeah. On your was what, on your birthday, close to your birthday. Uh, it was the day after my uh, 33rd birthday. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So Kona will always play. I think two special things for me birthday and uh, of course racing here at world champs and what'd you think what was your experience like i had an amazing experience in the swim because i got to be near the front and that was just super cool at a world championship um i made the critical error of trying to go with daniela (laughs) 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 on the bike uh i got excited and i just really want i'm a racer and coming from short course i want to race and Daniela obviously is world champion for a reason and uh, just didn't quite did it for a little bit and then I paid the price for it on the bike and so coming home on the Queen K was uh, pretty I'm hard. the bike you're sort of by yourself a little bit? I was by myself and a couple girls went by me like Heather Jackson right. and Michelle Vesterby and they were like great job and I was like crying <laughs> <laughs> on the inside but um, yeah I made the, the critical error and I actually ran pretty well in the marathon I went into the energy lab into 12th place yes and that's not bad for my first Kona no the mistake I made was drinking from the sponges and oh. yeah yeah I know you know where those sponges have been yeah in, yeah. Well, the, they're, they get <laughs> disinfected, and unfortunately what they're disinfected in doesn't agree with your stomach. So, though I wasn't the only one that did it, no, I'm no, not going to name that. names. Yes. Um, but, yeah, so I uh, was pretty ill in the energy lab, and so I will not be drinking from the sponges this year. <laughs> Lesson number one, do not, do not drink, drink from sponges. sponges. <laughs> yes. yes. Anyone watching, don't do it. No matter how cold and delicious it seems in the moment. You're desperate, and it's just, it seems like a good idea, and it's not. <laughs> no. So from that, when you look at 2017, fourth at Ironman Texas. Yes. First, 70.3 uh, Puerto Rico. Yep. Second at Pecan. Yep. Third at Boulder, 70.3. Yeah. A good, solid year. Yeah, it's been a really good year. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've been trying to grapple with this year is my nutrition, both at, over the 70.3 distance and iron distance, and it's really evolved for me when I look back at uh, how I started in doing Ironmans, I was doing a lot more solid foods, and I'm definitely switching more over to a liquid diet for right. Ironmans, and that seems to be agreeing with me a lot more. So that's really what I've been trying to perfect this year. It has not been a matter of fitness for me. It's been figuring out how to not throw up on the run and, and little just simple things like that. And um, and it it's just a part, it's a massive part of Ironman. And so I think if I can get that right, which... You know, each time I, th- I think I've got it right, and it's always a bit of tweaking to I was pretty darn close in Texas. I had a really good marathon there, and uh, hoping to be able to do that this weekend. So, um, uh, one, don't drink with sponges. Two, don't go with Danielle on the bike. Correct. Okay. <laughs> race your own race, which you hear over and over and over again here. Um, but it's so easy to get caught up in it. And I think I was talking to Jesse Thomas last yes. year, and he said, I did every single thing I said I wasn't going to do. You know, he went out to Javi way too hard, came down Javi, and then had nothing left on the Queen K. And, and you know, Jesse's an amazing athlete and so experienced that to hear that even he kind of succumbed to this race and yes. how 
easy it is to get excited by the helicopter and the motos and all of the action that that's at the front of the race you want to kind of be in there because when you drop back from that it's very quiet yes it is and you're all by yourself and it's it you, it, you kind of want to stay where the action is and so um it was actually really cool to talk to jesse after the race last year and hear you know we're human and we're racers and we want to race but as, as my manager, at least eventually, says, the race starts at 13 miles into this run. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. And, and the other thing that uh, we chatted earlier about this, uh, the people get carried away. Because Absolutely. there's very few. You're not doing another race all year long where there's a field like this. Correct. So it's, people are reacting and racing. Yeah. And it's 140 <laughs> miles. Yeah. Where normally there's four or five pros in a race. Or, Correct. You, know, you break up into small little groups quickly. Yeah. This doesn't happen that quickly. No, and, you know, I think this year the women's race is going to be so different than it's been in the past. I think we're going to have a front small group of swimmers right. that's going to be four to five minutes up the road. And then there's going to be a pack of seven to ten of us uh, that will be chasing those. But we're, we're usually the front pack. Right. You know, yes. but there's this next level of swimmer here. And I think that's Lucy Charles. I think that's Lauren Brandon. And I think that's Haley Chura. And I think those three are going to be out of the water together. And then that 47, 48 range, which is on par with the front pack men. These, right. these women are incredible. So we're going to see a totally different race, I think. And I think you're going to see the race get really strung out. Um, and, yeah, there's some young, new people, fresh faces. and Yeah, we're just talking to Lucy Charles. Yeah, uh, like yeah. 22 years old, is she? 24. 24. Gosh, she's a baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. And doing Ironman, because back when you were growing up in yeah. the sport, and you got into this, what, when you were 17 or something? I, I did my first trap on 11 and went pro at 14. Pro yeah. at 14. Yeah. <laughs> so similar to uh, when we were, we, we were talking to Sebastian. Yeah. I think he was in fourth grade. He says, I'm going to be a professional triathlete. And his teacher was like, that's not a profession. Yeah. You can't Nobody be a Nobody makes money doing, doing that. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but early on, the goal was the Olympics for you, I'm assuming. Yeah. Early on, the goal was the Olympics. Um, initially, I thought it was going to be in swimming. And then uh, I thought it was going to be in triathlon. And I was really fortunate to, even though I didn't personally get to achieve that goal, to be part of my husband's journey to the Olympics was really, really cool and yes. super fulfilling to watch Jared race at the 2008 Games and also have seen the other side of the coin where it's gut-wrenching when you don't make it. So I've kind of seen the whole sp pers uh, spectrum with the Olympics and I'm quite content to watch my friends do right. that because it's so much is out of your control in ITU racing, I much prefer being in the driver's non -drafting, seat. Non-drafting, yeah. you control your own destiny. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I think I love Ironman so much. It's also so much problem solving and it's not just great to be clever and you have to be disciplined. And um, some of those things I didn't do a great job of last year and I thought I was ready to, but the adrenaline gets going and just have to stay really calm and I hope I can bring that experience from last year into this week. This how Saturday. long how long you been here training? I got here on uh, Friday. Yeah, Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so a couple more days this year. Last year my sister-in-law got married um, just a week before Kona and so we got we didn't get here until uh, the Sunday prior to the race. So it was nice to just have a couple extra days to spend some time on the course. Um, knock out some of the obligations you've got race sure. week a little earlier. Yeah. yeah. What is it about this place? As, as somebody, like you said, you grew up in the sport, 11 years old, 17, yeah, 14 yeah. years old pro. What is it about this place that makes it so unique? I think because it's been a part of my life for so long. Our neighbor, when I was really, really little, um, always raced Ironman Canada. And so we would drive to Penticton from either Grand Isle or Princeton, depending on where we lived. And would watch Mr. Bodie race. I remember his name. I hope he's watching <laughs> because I don't think I've been in touch with him in 30 years. But we'd watch Mr. Bodie race and he would qualify for Kona at Ironman Canada. And then we'd watch it on TV when it aired. I remember it would come on and I just, and I remember he crashed hitting one of the cat eyes one year oh. and like had came home with, I just remember his hip and looking at it. And so I was just sort of always knew what Kona was and, even though it wasn't necessarily in my family, we just knew what it was. Triathlon was a word that was thrown around from the time I was a toddler. So I always knew what triathlon was. And, um, yeah, it, it's really cool to be racing here not only as 
a, just a participant, but as a professional. And to, to be able to say at 34 that this is my job and I'm still doing this and I've been doing it for 20 years and I love it, I think, more than ever. And I, that's pretty cool to be able to say that. And it's, so it's really cool for my parents to be able yes. to watch their daughter now race it, having grown up raising us, not knowing that our neighbor probably sparked a little something in us <laughs> from a young age. <laughs> so, Jared obviously wants to do this race one yes, day too. Yes, definitely. How do you guys balance between, you know, you're both professional triathletes, you have a great race, he doesn't have a great yeah, race. Yeah, you know? or vice versa. Or vice versa, yeah. right? Yeah. How do, you, how do you deal with that? It's hard. Um, it's really, really hard. And I think there, it's great when you're both racing well. Yes. That's, that's oh, the yeah. best. That's you know, you can't right. beat that. Uh, when you're both racing well, it's just like you're super, super high. But when one of you races well and the other doesn't, that's okay providing it flip-flops the next time. If you start to have that period of time where maybe one of you is racing well for a consistent period of time and the other one's not, that can get hard. Yeah. You know, and it's it's really, really tough. And we, we do this balancing act of supporting one another, but also kind of independently running our own careers. And um, it's hard. There are moments of that it's really, really tough. And there are really, really high moments. Um, but what we always say is those, those low moments where you fight or you work through a really hard session or maybe you're bickering out on the bike, which happens a lot, <laughs> I'll be honest, <laughs> on those long rides, it happens. Um, but when it all comes together, when you watch that other person have that amazing race or you both have that amazing race, it's, it makes it really, really, really sweet. And that can get you through years of hard times. Right. So um, I'm really hoping to... He sacrifices a lot to support me, and um, I'm really hoping to, like, I have this moment in my head where I cross the finish line, and my manager, Lisa, is there, and her husband, Dave, is there, and, and Jared's there, and we just get to have this moment where we're like, yes. <laughs> that's why we do this. Yes. That's why we all do this. Yeah, that's, I'm just getting choked up thinking about it. I want that really bad. What realistically like you said you were what 12th going into the energy lab last yeah. year yeah so realistically a top 10 is is not out of the picture not at all and i don't i i will not come to kona unless i believe i can be top 10 there's no reason to come here otherwise uh, it's an expensive race to get to it's expensive to be here there's tremendous sacrifice um it's a lot of sweating it's a lot it's a lot of sweating <laughs> it's, it's true um and it's a hard it's the i think it's the hardest iron man in the world and you don't come here to come 23rd you just don't and it's heartbreaking when you have a race like that and it took me a long time to recover from my performance last year and uh mentally it took me sure. a long time and so i'm i really want that top 10 i i'm going to be doing everything i can to make that happen but in a more disciplined mature fashion than i raced it last year with the pressure just to get here, right? Mm -hmm. To qualify and get points. Yep. When you're puking yes. in the energy lab, yeah. is there thought that goes through your mind, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to be top 10 here. Yeah. Uh, I can go to Arizona and start yeah. getting points for next yeah. year. Yeah. Does that enter the mind? I wanted to experience the entire race in its fullest. In the rawest. <laughs> yeah, last year. And so I never, ever thought about quitting because I think quitting would have felt a lot worse than yes. coming 23rd. Yeah. I can be really, really hard on myself and um, I think I would have been really embarrassed to not finish here because it's quite an honor to get one of those spots and I think you're doing a disservice to that person who was 35th or, 30, or 36th on the list. Yes. You know? Who wanted to get here. Who wanted get to get, yeah. So I, I just think for for sportsmanship, for sportspersonship to, to just put everything you have, even on the good days and even the bad, Jody Kanema was one spot ahead of me. Yes. You know, here's someone who's been top 10 how many times here? Mary Beth Ellis wasn't too far ahead of me. You know, he's, these are experienced athletes that have raced here many, many times, and they had a tough day. They didn't quit. You, you got to show respect for the place. And how many women quit this race in the professional field? And for women, almost none. There's like a handful. Half the men's field does. It's never the women. Oh. <laughs> so it's, it's just a very tough group of people. And yeah, I just, I, you, you guys look have at just the been stats. called out, by the way. <laughs> you look you at the stats, there's just the women gutted out no matter what. There's, I think, three or four DNFs every year. And it's, 
in the men's race, there's usually 20. Way to go. <laughs> so you Love just can't that. quit. You just can't ever, ever quit no matter what. So would Jared be good on this course? I think Jared would be great on this course because he loves the heat. He does love the heat. Loves yeah. the heat. Those are the IT races he did the best in. Um, and he runs a great marathon. And I think he, like myself, is still perfecting the nutrition component so that he can come off and run that 230, 235 that he's probably capable of, even on a course like this. Um, I think a fast marathon is in his future, uh, like a solo marathon. I think that's something he wants to go and do next year. Boston is a huge part of his uh, family uh-huh. upbringing. And so I think he'd like to go and run an open Boston um, Sweet. and kind of see what he's capable of and kind of bring that confidence into Ironman. So if he's not thinking about it now, I just put it out there to the universe. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> Maybe he's got to try and do it now. Um, it, but yeah, he, he's got so much potential for the, the marathon off the bike. You know, for guys like Jared, who were you know Olympic distance non yeah. draft legal? Yeah, and then all of a sudden the Olympic distance non draft goes away. Yeah, right. There's no, no stepping so there, stone there's anymore. There's no middle. It's basically yeah. saying you're a hundred meter guy. You got to go run a marathon. Yeah, right. You got to run a half marathon. Yeah. And when I look at people are doing 10, 12, 70.3s. They're running yeah. 10, 12 half marathons. Yeah, no pro runner is doing, doing that. that. Absolutely Nobody. No. Yeah. So it, that transition is really tough, right? It's super hard, and I really hope that we it can come back for the development of our sport. Like I look at, I think Ben Canute is a great example yes. of someone who is doing a good job of that balancing act. But the more long course racing you do, the harder it gets to do both. To do both, and you lose I your think speed. Ben really felt that. <laughs> you know, after oh. seventy point three worlds, it was. He went straight to Rotterdam, to Rotterdam and, then, and yeah. then went to Super League, yeah. and then he just tried to race Sarasota. And when I'm feeling like sorry for myself on the marathon, I'm going to think about Ben Canute's September racing schedule <laughs> and, <laughs> and not ridiculous. feel so guilty anymore Love or, or so, too sorry for myself anymore. Um, but yeah, I just there's no stepping stone right now, and I hope that comes back because just for the development of our sport, I think it's really, really important. It is very important. Yeah. Alicia, thanks so much thanks for taking so much, time. Bob. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. it. Alicia Kay has been our guest. <laughs> Round of applause. Pancho Man, take us out. Ready, everybody? Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alicia. Happy birthday to you. From Christmas, Bob. And Pancho Man. Happy birthday, Woohoo!